in the mid lane for G. This still will be a difficult task for Cloud9 because they are two of the best heroes in the game currently right now. The thing I like Ten about C9's lineup is like they they don't have any humongous cooldowns that they have to really Five rely on. Like remain. you could argue the, the Naga Siren Sleep is there, but that's not really a sleep that's going to set up for a ton. It's set up for maybe Ice Path and a Macro Pyre, but it's not it's not like your Womble combo that you need to use to end and win the game. Right. They have plenty of other Prepare abilities that have low cooldowns battle. that they're going to be relying on, not the big like you know Black Hole and what have you. Um, the the innate problem I see with VP's lineup is they don't have like a dedicated Nether Ward killer. I don't see anyone that's like particularly good at walking up safely, killing the ward and backing out. Um, it sounds crazy, but I thought I thought maybe even PL would have been good because his illusions actually do um, like full damage to the Nether Ward. It's something yeah. I just learned a couple days ago that I didn't know. Um, it's really really good against that that uh, Nether Ward. So they don't. That's one thing I'm worried about. I love the Centaur, actually. It's one of my favorite offlane heroes. It doesn't get enough love right now. Yeah. I think the Ags upgrade is so freaking broken, and I don't think we see it enough. It's just, I think the problem with the Centaur and getting Ags is that it takes so long, to, and there's so many other heroes that are almost better in this situation that require a little farm, which is like Tusk. To it, it's pretty much just Tusk and Clockwork. Like, those two heroes in general, I think. Like, that, they, that's why they overshadow heroes like Centaur Warrunner, among other things. So, I definitely sure. agree with you. Yeah, no, I agree. Tusk is just a beast, and I would definitely take up Tusk over Centaur, but since Tusk is getting uh, a lot more love and a lot more hate as far in terms of bans now, uh, I, I am happy to see the Centaur. But again, to touch on that point, oh, well, I thought we're going to see an engagement up here yeah, in the top roof. This is most certainly engagement. That was a triple decay. They get the yeah. raise off. No tail in trouble. Telekinesis, the lockdown is real. Great shackle shot, but the sun doesn't last that long. They are going in. Good nether blast. And then Misery gets another double decay. FG is sitting at 43 out of 397 health. He actually survives. Misery is a tank. He's up to 1,000 HP. But somehow they lose the engagement. Who got the bounty rune? Cloud9 got both of them. All right, so they lose first blood, but they do get both bounty runes. What a clash. What a clash indeed. And it, yeah, it's going to be pugging them mid for Fata, which I imagine when Shadowfiend gets leveled, should actually be more than fine this lane. Uh, unless Fata outplays him, but I think Shadowfiend just straight up wins this matchup. Pretty easy for him. Uh, nice raises by G. Uh, what are you seeing? Like, honestly, how often have we said Shadowfiend should win this matchup and then he wins the matchup? Like, it has been very standard to see a Shadowfiend absolutely decimate a lane or even just get off to like a slow start because maybe someone's harassing them and then they just go to the jungle. Shadowfiend wins like every matchup. It's so stupid. Well, I I would say there's cer certainly some matchups that are kind of a nightmare for Shadowfiend, like a uh, co-op with Drow, for instance, or even co-op in general, I think these Shadowfiend. Don't tell dead but... again. They have Telekinesis, he is most certainly dead. Oh boy. They're gonna bring it back. He'll rip side, he'll try to bring dead FNG. And they get the, the counter ward. Ugh. And uh, over the top engagement, he took so much damage, and I think Envy was like, kind of maybe panicked and went for the shackle shot because shackle shot level one is not very impressive oh. but tried to do whatever he could to save uh, no tail and no tail actually tp's top now so he's right. like screw it bottom i'm not gonna get anything i need to maybe get some pulls this is his first pro game on wind ranger despite that he has been spamming it i suppose in uh in pubs or whatever he's got that anime hairstyle though look at that uh, the flower song beauty that yeah i'm Radiance not a big fan of that hairstyle bottom lane at bone seven the off lane jakira will go down tp comes out for misery they're just gonna rotate everything up they're gonna give misery the off lane and they're gonna have bone seven i guess rotate either he, he probably goes back bottom and they go for an aggressive dual lane again um, but Misery still is going to be playing as, as a support, but he'll be able to get some sort of farm here on this Undying. I like the Undying with the Jakiro a lot more than I like the, the Naga with the Jakiro, so... Well, it looks like maybe VP's uh, approach to this is just, we're going to win the lanes really hard, and then make it so that we get way more out of the laning stage, and then when you go for your death ball push, that we're going to have core items on our heroes faster than we need them to, or faster than you have them. Yeah. So that we can split push a little bit better, because right now bottom lane seems like it's kind of somewhat of a disaster. <laughs> I mean, they're just kind of making doing musical lanes at this point. Bone Seven's yeah. now down here with an Orb of Venom on yeah. the, on the Jakiro. Oh, classic! The classic Orb of Venom Jakiro. This has been a while since we've seen this off lane Jakiro, which I think it wasn't invented by Universe, but Universe played a lot of it uh, a couple of months ago. Summit Two, I want to say. Uh, I believe is when it was most popular, but that 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 time is long gone. Jakiro has been nerfed. 
Yeah, he got hit with a baseball bat by Ice Frog, as most heroes commonly uh, do when they're good. So we'll see how Bone Seven does. I guess. I guess we'll see how he does down here in this bottom lane and, and later on down the road as well. It, I as going back to mid, I think G is going to be going for this mech more than likely on the Shadow Fiend. It just seems too good to pass up this game for what they're dealing with in terms of maybe fighting, in terms of maybe split pushing. I'd be very surprised to see him go for anything other than uh, an early mech here on the Shadow Fiend. So we'll see. Pugdust is actually doing pretty well in mid. I thought, well, I, as you get to levels, it just gets it, oh, bottom lane. Misery. Taking some damage. Can't get the tomb down. Finally puts the tomb down. He actually gets a little bit of life by using the decay. They should get think, FNG here? Yeah, oh. FNG is, my, is dead. Illidan might be dead too. Bone 7. Oh. He dodges his stun. Ice path misses. Whoa. He's got liquid fire in one. He'll dual breath. He will get this kill with a dot. Maybe? Maybe? No, he's regenerating up with a tango. He'll stay alive. Oh my god. Illidan should have been dead there. The ice path dodge coming out. Very close. It is a two for one trade. This off lane. Still disastrous. Illidan getting a lot of this farm. He will have to back up. Lil does get hit up with the uh, Undying's K there. And top lane, DK Phil was trying to be aggressive against No Tail, but nothing happening there. So, yeah, this bottom lane is really being a problem. And uh, G still is uh, up ahead in the mid lane right now in terms of CS. He is going to TP in from FNG, who will probably go for a Shackle gank here onto Fata. It's a very squishy hero, so if you can rotate in and get this kill, it's going to be perfect. And G's going to set up for that by blocking the creep wave, getting it back on his hill, and going from there, hopefully. We'll see if they can go onto Fata. This is an illusion. Hopefully, FNG doesn't go nuts for this, and it looks like he won't. They're going to walk right in. There is the Nether Ward on the ground. They're going to go for it. Good decrep, but the Rays will come first. The Shackle's going to go through. Last right click comes out, and that's going to be G getting the Radiant's kill and the Nether Ward kill as well. Top. So, some extra gold on top of it. Yeah, uh, you pointed out really well that the stats are not there for Pugna. Like, you, your strength gain is one of the lowest in the game, I think. Yep. Uh, I think it's, let me check it real fast. It is 1.2. It's really, really bad. So It's not great. Yeah, and it actually doesn't even have very much armor that I think about it, too. I didn't know that part. Yep. Very, very nice gank. He smoked for it. I thought he was going to get revealed, but because he smoked before he TP'd, uh, even though they had that ward at their top and, and top river, they didn't see him. So nice gank there from FNG. Yeah, really solid stuff and really good block coming out from G as well, just to make sure the positioning was a bit better in their favor. So uh, it's, it's also important that when you go for those ganks, especially coming from the safe lane, that the second you TP in, like, you don't hesitate and, like, Oh, we have to wait until he gets in the right spot. We have to wait, 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 because the longer you wait, the more obvious it becomes that you're gone. So it's it's very good that like as soon as he TP's there, he he wraps around and just goes as fast Dyer's as he can. Yeah. If you were sitting bottom, you might think that he was still walking back to lane. Maybe he didn't have a TP scroll. That's just exactly. really good timing coming up from Virtus Pro. It's really tough to hit those timings. These pro players are going to be on top of their game in the entire game. They're going to say, okay, this guy's missing. This guy's off the map for this amount of time. And uh, that just didn't, that call either wasn't made or it wasn't made fast enough. So Virtus Pro will get the kill with FNG there. Top lane has been really good for Envy. This lane has been the lane that has been going dominantly for C9, and that's good. They will go for Treads with the Wind Ranger, which is interesting. He has the Basilius. Meanwhile, FNG runs into No Tail. He's some, a little bit of harass here. Riptide's gonna go. No Tail will do some extra damage, 51 base damage plus the armor reduction. It's nice to have. DK Fobo setting on Tranquils now. Nothing else besides that. He has how much CS? Eight. He's getting level four. I think Bone Seven actually is doing better in levels. He is. This this bottom lane is doing a lot better in terms of experience. Sure, they might have died, but DK Phobos is not getting much out of this top lane. The real question is, uh, are they shutting down the safe laners as well as they need to? I would say it's okay. Like 33 CS. It's not like he's not free farming. He definitely has okay CS. But look at Envy. He has been hitting. He, he's got like almost every single CS. He's been doing really really well for himself. Now getting a little bit more extra as he goes, dips into the jungle, gets a little creep, couple creeps there. So he's up to 55, just about seven minutes, which is very, very good for himself. How, how often do we see treads on this hero is the real question. It's usually phase boots, is it not? It is usually phase boots. I don't see a problem at all with treads. I think it makes you your DPS go up a lot when you're not ulting. Um, and it gives, especially if you do go for the bottle, it just makes the bottle so much more useful. I, I actually like treads a little bit more personally. Uh, I'm I'm interested. Radiant's you mentioned focus fire. That's that's the biggest attack. thing, and especially if you go Aghanim Scepter, it's not going to matter if you have treads usually. But true, it's yeah. But I think the main thing is like it gives you more DPS when you're not using your focus fire, so that you have so, ability to 
Uh, it also just feels better with your bottle. Like, you can get so much more out of your bottle. That's the biggest seven, thing. It got brought to the cliff, and he is stuck. Ice Pack will go. He can walk out, and actually, they're in trouble. Boxer rotates. Splitters will miss. Look at that Nether Blast decrep damage. Will is going to get obliterated with the Liquid Fire. He's stuck. To, he's sticked up, but it's not going to matter. They're still chasing after Illidan. Pulse was going to go. They got the huge decay up. We have a Solrup as well for Misery. was used on himself, I believe, to survive. And Fatsa rotating with a haste room gets two easy kills. And Illidan, who Dyer's was doing okay in farm, goes attack. down in Fatsa now. That's a big set of kills coming out for that mid lane Radiant's Pugna. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but there was uh, a hero sitting above here just forever. Like, just waiting forever for Envy to pop Radiant's out. So very nice patience. I, I can't remember. I think it was, I can't remember if it was the Centaur or the uh, Shadow Shaman, but I think it was F. F and G? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Thank you, Pip. Um, but just sat up there with a lot of patience. So F and G's just been all across the board, all across the map, been doing really well for himself. So they get the kills bottom on Illidan, but they trade top lane for Envy. So that's something that's interesting. Like you mentioned, F and G being very effective. But yet another smoke is going to go ahead and ward up as well when he gets back to base. So he is playing that hard five position. He's not really getting the farm to necessarily get that early blink dagger, but that's fine. Maybe sometime. Here in the near future, if they can start pushing down towers or start split pushing, they'll be in that situation. Lil does have Arcane, so at least he's got some farm. He's almost level 6 as well, so that spell steal is going to come in handy. And if he gets, like, Nether Blast as well, that's going to be a huge spell to steal. Not to mention Tombstone, Nether Ward, Song, maybe. And that's probably all that I would classify as really good. Maybe Ensnare also. Ice Path, man. I, yeah, that's true. Ice Path that's, like, the, the best one in the game yeah, outside Fisher. I keep forgetting that. I, I just don't think it's that's because a particularly good spell, still, uh, spell though. Oh, it's... it's it's way better on Rubik than it is on Takiro. That's the that's the main thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just you forget about it because we never see Takiro anymore. So yeah, that's true. No harm, no foul. But I yeah, that that's a good one. It, it probably won't be too effective until Jakiro gets more levels, which he won't get for a while though. That's the only problem. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Nether Ward is would be fantastic to steal. Nether Blast, as you mentioned, it's like actually probably one of the best because you push so damn fast with it. Gives so. you that extra new potential as a as a rubric that you don't generally have, which is pretty nice. There is a ward right under the sentry that is about to be countered by No-Tail. He's going to walk right in, and we'll see you later, Mr. Land Ward. They just put that down, and FG has to watch from afar, and he's like, God damn it. So I just put that thing down, but they're going to try to jump in. Four heroes bottom. Good surf wards. They bring down immediately. Bone 7 getting hit up as well, but here comes Fatsa. Life through on an FAG. They have the tombstone down. It was stolen by Alil. Perfectly done. Misery caught out. Look at Fatsa taking the chunk damage coming out. They hit the split earth as well. Misery in trouble. Last right click. Decay will keep him alive. Illidan should back. He's kind of low. He does stick up. The nether ward's still there. They can't catch up to Fatsa. Does turn into a two for one, and Lil already getting the spell seals. That tombstone steal is fantastic, and they come out ahead there in that engagement. Yeah, that is a really good spell to steal too. I forgot about that. Uh, that was also it didn't look as flashy as it could have. Um, as the action on the Fata, I think he should be fine though. He's got a twelve stick charge. TP coming in aggressively from Misery, but I don't think they're going to catch anybody. Um, but FNG, he went for just the straight up um, Master Serpent Ward uh, trap without using anything before it onto the Naga. And he actually hit it, yeah, but the did. Naga used his uh, images to get out of it, but he still died anyway. I thought it was a really nice kind of flashy play there from FNG. What happened to the Tombstone that Misery put down? Did it die to the Serpent Wards? I think it did, yes. That's crazy. Could be wrong, but I think it did. That, I, I only noticed the one Tombstone at the, at, like, the end of that point, and of course it, yeah, was, me too. it was the Rubik's, so... That was a very interesting play, but uh, top lane, DK Phobos will get some more room to work with. He's not really scared of No-Tail. He's caught up nicely. He's getting very close to that Blink Dagger. He's done a great job. His CS is now 42. He was sitting only at 8 not too long ago, and this early Blink Dagger is huge, and they're even going to rotate they're up gonna go FNG. For him. He has, gonna he has Stampede. They're going to go for him like right now, I think. Uh, they're, they're, they're waiting. They're kind of baiting it up with DK Phobos. They could Stampede in immediately if they wanted to. They're so ready. He's going to use it in just a second. He doesn't even need to. He's just going to look for the casual stop. Song's going to go. No Tail is going to TP out. That's a free kill gone. Bottom lane fight breaking out. It's only two versus three. Bots of life draining Illidan away. Lightning Storm will go and bring him down. Great ice path catch from Bone 7. Illidan in trouble. Liquid fire. Stampede goes. He might die to the dot, and he will. Lil will get the kill on the Bone 7, and somehow three heroes die. She has rotated in. Now cleaning up the tombstone. Look at again. There you go. Dyer's now get the Nether Ward. So many destructible objects in this Dyer's map. And they finally will bring them all down. But it's a one for three trade. 
I didn't even notice she rotated in, and also Will stole life drain. That's pretty funny as well. Yeah, and they're just getting way more out of these trades. DK Phobos almost has a friggin' blink as an offlaner centaur against the Wind Ranger. Yeah, and well, I don't even know who else to call because they kind of switched lanes so many times. FNG gets the tower last hit, so he's going to be on his way towards Arcane's plus blink or axe, whatever he wants. I personally love rushing Ags on Shadow Shaman. Obviously, Blink is fine, but Ags is one of the upgrades. Or the upgrade for Ruby, or, um, Shadow Shaman is so damn good. Now with the Blink on DK Phobos, so they can do something. But bottom lane is where C9 want to fight. God, this Lightning Storm is so difficult. I mean, obviously, they have the Nether Ward up, and that's going to annoy Illidan, but well, they're going to try to deny this tower. It will get destroyed by the Liquid Fire proc. I mean, mistimed it there a bit. Shadow Blade from G. Oh, really? I thought he was going to go for the mech. I swear, I thought that was going to be the item he was going to purchase, just so they have this way to early fight the mechanism. But that's not going to be the case. He goes for the Shadow Blade, the extra chunk damage, and he's also able to get some solo potential with pickoffs and things of that nature. So maybe combined with GK, oh, no. we we'll find a couple of kills. Bottom lane, we are going to find Lil dead as MV has finally rotated and Dyer's gotten involved. That was the first kill he was involved in. Uh, he's died once top lane, obviously. He is going for Aghanim Scepter, so it leads me to believe how useful are these treads pickups exactly when you have an Aghanim's at, like, what, 16, 17 minutes into the game? Yeah, it's, I mean, oh, uh, TP top. going to be No Tail, who's very, very Great poor. Great Jackal from Envy. He's got a Focus Fire DK Phobos. He does have Stampede. I bet he was alone. That was pretty great. Oh, she gets the kill on a No Tail top lane. Shadow Blade's up. I was too busy enthralled by that that beautiful shack to shot from but that's all right. He just TP top too. Dyer's like, oh, this Naga is so there. poor. So any idea of transitioning into some kind of core Naga Radiant's is just out the window, I think, this game. He's just got nothing. Dyer's Wards come down from FNG. They have no glyph. They already used it. This is going to be an easy tier 2 tower dump now. He's dead. Mid lane, it looks like. They have the wind run. He already used it. Shackle Shot's going to go. DK Phobos is going to get caught. Misery Thrones out of the tombstone. They could go for him if they wanted to. Blink's up in two, but they still have the zombies chasing after him. Bottom lane, Telkinix, they're going to find Bone 7. Lil taking a lot of damage from that nether ward. Great mech from Fata, but they will get the kill with G using his raise up. Fata out of mana. We're going to try to TP away. Can they get this kill? Raise one. They won't be able to get there for Telkinix, and it was on cooldown. Still, they grab the kill on Envy mid. They grab the kill on Bone 7 bottom. Dyer's they defend their ah, tier 2 attack. tower. Barely. They put pressure on the tier one. Virtus Pro have a pretty nice lead here. If you look at the graph, it's 5,000, almost 7,500 net worth. It is 7,500 net worth lead coming up for Virtus Pro. That's fantastic. You're at 60 G minutes into the game. G just picked up a Shadow Blade. He's almost, he almost has his BKB too. I, I <laughs> Almost everyone likes the mech build more nowadays, and it seems to be more the, the go-to build. I do love Shadow Blade though, a lot on Shadow Fiend. Uh, even if it is kind of greedy and kind of like um, it's like all about him. Like he can make all, a bunch of solo plays, but it just, I don't know. It gives him an extra element that I really, really like. I can't put my finger on it, but uh, it just feels right on the hero for some reason for me. I don't know. I'm glad that more people are picking up Shadow Blade. That patch, that was a while ago, that changed Shadow Blade to have like a longer cooldown. And they made, of course, the duration longer. I'm glad they made the duration longer. It makes the the item actually balanced instead of what it was before. So like yeah. there, there, there were points in time where Bulba was picking it up on... Uh, to hold that thought. Ice path mid ill any trouble. Macro power gonna go through. Stampeded out, though, so he should be okay for now. No tail still smoked up. He could have gone for the song, decided not to. And instead, they, they're gonna trade nothing for a tier 1 tower. I mean... Virtus Pro are clearly dictating the pace of play. That's a full PKB dot after just picking up the Shadow Blade. Here comes the Sog from No Tail. They'll try to fight this. Did they catch G? G got away. They're only going to get FNG on the Shadow Shaman. G will walk out with his Shadow Blade. FNG is dead. That's a Sog for Arasta. They'll take that trade any day of the week. It is a level one Sog. And guess what? Illidan runs down Misery mid lane as well, getting his Bloodstone charge up to nine. Virtus Pro getting great trades all across the map, Trout. Yeah, even though the Leshrac didn't get too much, like, he got okay CS bottom, but he wasn't free farming. But with these tower, with with all this extra tower gold that he has, it's... now I didn't even realize, but now he has a Bloodstone with an extra charge. BKB now purchased onto the Shadow Fiend, who's going for a solo pick off bottom. <laughs> but the Yules comes out actually from Bone 7, one auto attack, he couldn't get the second raise in time. Doesn't want to expend the BKB just for kill for Jakiro, and I don't blame him. See if he can get lucky with a raise. No, he doesn't. And so darn, he's so close. 
You needed to walk up just a bit for that kill, and he misses it. He says, ah, damn. But like you mentioned, didn't want to use that PPD charge, and that's fine. Illidan is already edicting up into the tier 3 tower. They actually have to glyph this. Cloud Knight seem a bit spread thin. Maybe a bit uncomposed here. They're having trouble fighting pickoffs. They're having trouble defending their towers. And Illidan and Co. are looking to punish this. Virtus Pro have a fantastic lead right now. And this game one is looking great for them as it uh, progresses through. Denied. Much better showing this series so far than we saw when they played uh, EG in the best of five in the upper bracket, which was just a trounce by EG. Um, so whether it was F uh, BP off that day or something, up oh, top lane, I see lots of pings. The Yules comes out on the left shard. He has no BKB. Maybe needs a stampede from, uh, yep, they get the shackle shot. It's not going to latch. I think he maybe needs to deny himself here. Yeah, and he does. Good deny coming out, but they finally pick up uh, at least something out of that. They make sure they use his bloodstone and he, he loses some charges there. That's fine. That's down for a while as well. Like you mentioned, VP looking so much better. Of course, both teams are on Lux. Uh, there is a boot camp for Cloud9 in Romania currently. In fact, where we were at just a, a month ago for the TI5 qualifiers. Same exact studio, which is pretty nice. PGL guys, super awesome there. So shout out to them. For Virtus Pro, uh, they're all in the same vicinity. I'm not sure if they're boot camping. I would have to imagine so. But both teams playing from the Lux server. Obviously, this is going to benefit Cloud9 a bit more. Monta in trouble. Mechs up, stays alive. DK Fobo is going to work. Good decrep. Life Drain comes out as well. Bots are back up to full health. Nether Blast gets used by Lil. They're in trouble. Misery is going to work with this Tombstone and his Flesh Golem. Lil will use his Fade Ball. He does have Blink, and they will both get out. Bottom lane now. FNG shackled up. Envy does grab the kill, and they'll pick up the Serpent Wards as well. Oh, man. That's crazy. G's got to go in for a potential Requiem, perhaps. Looking for Misery or Fatsa. A Requiem would kill Misery, but Misery. They have a Sentry Ward there. Yules will come out. That'll be from, I believe, Bone 7, who comes up from the backside. They get the Ice Path. Jump in from Lil. Telekinesis. They're going to bring him back. G and Virtus Pro want to fight this. Blink stop. Comes in from Phobos. They get the Fade Bolt, the race to clean it up for G. And that is a nice kill as well. Lil will TP away. The, the zombies clean up by G. They won't give him any gold, unfortunately. Mid lane. Action all over the goddamn map, and Illidan will go down. He literally just spawned, walked mid, and lost Bloodstone charges again. Now down to four. Envy is I, Envy is saying, I will take that trade every day of the week. And he's going to have 1,600 gold in the bank as well. All right, Trout, we've, we've got a, a break in the action now, finally. Jesus. Yeah, well, we'll see. There's actually FNG spotted out by a war. Oh, nope, he's smoked. Smoked out. Okay, is maybe he... gonna go for a solo kill. He's... Oh, it broke actually. Now they Both see him. If they catch him with the Yules, now they have vision of him. The war just fades, so they don't see him anymore. <laughs> kind of unfortunate timing right there. But he does get away. All right, well, Virtus Pro have made some okay plays, and then they made the plays with uh, Illidan dying twice in a row when it really shouldn't have happened. The good thing is G is still in prime position. They will find Misery. Raises Nether Blast stolen again. Mech is not nearly enough. They'll even steal the Nether Ward for Lil. That's fantastic. And they'll take down uh, Siege Creep. Maybe put some pressure under the tier 3 tower. Fots will try to defend. All right, 18 to 10. It's been a barn burner, man. It's a lot of action. The G is so big right now. Yeah. Uh, he can get so many different things. I think Butterfly would be good this game, too. Um, he, the, he'll have the magic immunity with a PKB, and then he'll have physical damage um, mitigation with the evasion, which is really, really good against, obviously, Wind Ranger. I don't see her getting an MKB anytime soon, so. Uh, FNG, I, I know what you're going for there, man, but it really it just didn't work out. He misses the War Trap, and uh, <laughs> an Invis No-Tail comes around. He probably would have gotten that kill on Bone 7 had No-Tail not used the Incinerator to ca cancel off the Shackle, so. Rough stuff for FNG. They'll take down the tier 2 tower mid, though, and it feels like Virtus Pro have lost sight of their target, which is taking down towers, maybe taking fights head on and trying to get objectives done. And that just hasn't been the case. The Shrek, he had that nine bloodstone charge up and then he died twice. And that's really been the biggest issue. Are they still in a good position? Absolutely. You already mentioned G is in a fantastic spot. He's got 2.8K gold. I would not be surprised to see a butterfly next, maybe a Helm of the Dominator casually if he wants to. He could certainly buy it right here from the side shop. And it looks like he might do that. No, he just buys a TP. <laughs> Mott was wrong. Yeah. All right, you know what? <laughs> if, give, give me your trough was right, Spams. All right, let's go. It, it would thing, certainly, so. you know, one of the reasons why I like the Helm of the Dominator Shadow Blade is because you can solo Roche very, very early on. Your damage output is so high with the Necromastery and the presence of the Dark Lord. Um, it just it makes it so easy to Roche, even from Radiant. So what you're saying right now is that Shadow Fiend is feeling himself. 
Yes. Shout, uh, I, shout would, I would say that. Shout out some offense. <laughs> They're heading into Roche. Cloud9 are trying to take this with Focus Fire. They do not have armor reduction. Will walk in, gets up the Nether Ward. He's like, I have walked into a world of hurt. Somebody, dear God, help me. He'll help oh some of the ice pass coming out. G's gonna walk in. The Yule's up on Bone 7. BKB, Requiem will go. Envy gets blown up by this split earth. They have to leave. Tombstone is doing some work. There's the Lightning Storm. No tail. He's gonna get a song. He's got it. Effigy jumps in, gets the shackle off. There's the life drain. Effigy will get the kill. Afonso gets the return. Envy buys back. G on the other side. They'll find the ice path. They won't be able to get the kill on Misery. Not just yet. He's so tanky. They're not going for Roche. Cloud Art are coming from the backside. Illidan cannot afford to die. Shackle shot will not last, but he slowed up from the death bolt of the zombies. Good ice path on Defonso. They can't bring Illidan down. They don't have the damage. Misery is still tanking this up. He finally goes down. Now it's two Cloud Nine members caught in a pincer movement here. Fonza comes in. Nether Blast will miss. Death Ward is up, Nether Ward rather. They're gonna grab it on the kill with G with the right click. Envy Shack Shut latches beautifully. But Lil comes in, Ice Pass. It's going to zone them out, but it won't catch them. There's the Shadow Blade. Polster was gonna go. The Edict is well. The damage is gonna be real. Envy died back, coming out for the Wind Ranger. That might have been a game losing fight trough if I've ever seen one. Bone 7 is going to get clipped. He'll try to make his way out. He does avoid the Splitter. Cross section Ice Pass. What's happening? Live bath, man. Another buyback this time from Pugna. They do have a song available if they need to you know, stop them from taking Roche, but I think that they can actually just go heal, come back and fight it before Envy's up in fighting shape. What the hell? This was a crazy fight. BP just gets absolutely everything. C9 gets nothing. All right, so the, the good thing the fight recap was still up. It was a 3.5k gold gain for Virtus Pro and a 3k gold loss for Cloud9. That's two buybacks gone, one of which was a dieback, and five or six deaths in total, I believe, across the entirety of the fight. Maybe seven with Bone Seven dying twice. I'm not sure. Um, it is a 15, almost 20k net worth lead, and like you mentioned, they're gonna heal up and they're gonna head to Roche. And Envy, even though he has an Aghanim Scepter, Aghanim Scepter, he just doesn't do any damage with his Focus Fire at all. So they've got to find some way to dish out the damage here. Now there's a BKB on Lush and G. So how are you going to deal with that? You're going to obviously miss out on a lot of damage from Pugda and, and Bone7. They will smoke up. If this smoke fails, I would almost think that Cloud9 would call GG. They're so far behind. They will jump in. They'll miss the ice path. G. BKB as soon as the shackle shot comes down. Great ice path. Ice path. Stop on to two. And they're going to work. They will end stare up G. But misery. Last right click. He's done. And that is it. G is godlike. GG is called by Cloud9. This first game was a disaster. <laughs> and Virtus Pro come out on top heavily in game number one. I got to hand it to Lil for two reasons. One, um, he always seems to be very adamant and on top of his game in terms of selling all his items or putting them on the ground the second the GG is called. Yep. I don't know if you saw that, but the second the GG was called, he's just he's putting his items on the ground as fast as he can. Yes.